This is the atmosphere we all missed. This is what we visualized for so many months. And the fact that we're back feels oh so good. 73 degrees here in Orchard Park, New York. There's some rain in the forecast, but later in the day should avoid it until postgame. The Steelers and the Bills. Pittsburgh won the toss. They have deferred to the second half. Chris Boswell will kick it off for Pittsburgh. And this place is juiced up. Highmark Stadium. It feels like a collective release from all of these fans. And it's fantastic for all the fans, but the players have to channel it the right way. NFL kickoff weekend. We are underway. Return. McKenzie. Still going. Finally broke down inside the 25. What a way to open up for Buffalo as Gilbert helped save a touchdown. 75-yard run back. So you see where the alley is, and there's a good block there, and everyone is cleaned up. So Isaiah McKenzie was running free for essentially 40, 50 yards before he even had to make a move. Incredible kickoff return right out of the gate. Heath Farwell, the special teams coach. What a way to get going. Let's see if Brian Dable, the offense coordinator, tells Josh Allen to strike right here on first play. Dable in his fourth year calling the plays for Buffalo. Josh Allen in his fourth season in the NFL. Shotgun to open up from the 24. Allen has time. Later underneath, Cole Beasley. Falls forward, just short of the 15, brought down by the rookie Trey Norwood. Mike Tomlin very high on Norwood, first year out of Oklahoma. Josh Allen's numbers through the roof last season. Bills record for passing yards, touchdowns, completion percentage. Second down and three for Buffalo. McKenzie lines up in the backfield. Take it. The hands from Diggs, but gets tripped up. Loss of two on the play. Norwood again around the football for Pittsburgh. Starting offense for the Buffalo Bills. They like this offensive line. They believe that this will be one of the better units in the league this season. The wide receiving core about as good as it gets. McKenzie once again in the backfield. This is a third down and five. Opening series for Buffalo. Allen. Pump. Throw. Wobbler. It got tipped. The Steelers' defense holds after tremendous field position for the Buffalo Bills. And this is what Cameron Hayward does so well. Provides pressure on the quarterback, even if there's not a sack. Also in the neighborhood, number 56, Alex Highsmith, replacing Bud Dupree at outside linebacker. Josh Allen even tried to change his arm angle to get that one through, and Cameron Hayward wasn't having it here early in the game. Pittsburgh led the NFL in sacks last season. They've been so consistent in that department. This is a 37-yard attempt for Bass, hoping to get Buffalo on the board. And he knocks it through. Had a fantastic rookie season. Set a Bills record with 141 points. He's got three to open up 2021 in Orchard Park. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Gillette, the best a man can get. Sonic, this is how we Sonic. And by Rocket Mortgage, for the playbook on home loans, Rocket Cash. Isaiah McKenzie went to the pop-up tent after the fair catch, appeared to be something with his shoulder. Bills take over. Hand off. Singletary with a pep in his step. Good extra effort to the 20-yard line. Brought down by Joe Schober. Yeah, McKenzie just on the punt return. And that's when he slumped over a little bit of pain. If you have an existing shoulder injury, sometimes a quick motion may pop it a little bit. And that's probably what they're working on in the tent. Kenzie remains in there, looking at a second down and two after the impressive run by Singletary. 
Gets the call again, and Singletary got through that initial wave and tried to cut it back. It's going to be very close. Tyson Alu-Alu with the tackle, and it is a first down. Defensively for Pittsburgh, this defense was ranked number three in the NFL last season. They can get pressure from all angles. No Stephon Tuitt, though. Tuitt on IR will miss at least the first three games of the season, still dealing with some knee trouble. And McKenzie is now jogging off. New center downs for the Bills. Allen, pocket holds up. Initially, Allen breaks away. Flag is down. Josh Allen, the zigzag move to the 35. The chase from the veteran Melvin Ingram. 13 yards on the run, but two flags. Holding. Offense, number 73. 10 yard penalty. Deion Dawkins called for the hold. Nearly a sack from Ingram there. Right there. And, and how about. While Deion Dawkins was holding Ingram, Ingram was holding Josh Allen. He created that hold because there was nothing else Deion Dawkins could do at that point. This is where picking up Melvin Ingram in the offseason is already paying dividends for Pittsburgh. Uh, T.J. Watt, Melvin Ingram, Alex Highsmith bringing the pressure outside. Three-time pro bowler Ingram comes over from Los Angeles. First down and 20. Take and throw, laser beam caught. Stefan Diggs said he took a smack right away from Minka Fitzpatrick. That's a six-yard game. Mike Tomlin said they underestimated Stefan Diggs last season, and he made them pay. Let's check in with Evan. Well, and you saw it. You guys called it. It is a shoulder injury for Isaiah McKenzie. Looked to be that right shoulder really in a lot of pain going into the locker room. No pads on there. His return is questionable. We'll keep an eye on it. But that hurts special teams. Big time for Buffalo. No doubt. Uh, they have other pieces in the wide receiver spot, but the special teams part of it is huge. I would expect Matt Breida to replace him as the returner. Second down and 14. Omaha! Long count from Allen. We've got a little Omaha. And Allen's got a completion to Cole Beasley. Tackled by two defenders after the four-yard grab, including Trey Norwood. Mike Tomlin mentioned him in our sit-down yesterday and his abilities inside, outside, nickel, dime, quickness. He's fallen in love with him already. Besides Mike Tomlin, you know who else is falling in love with him and wants him to be successful? It's Cam Sutton. Yeah. Because Cam Sutton is playing outside corner where he wants to be. But they have to slide him inside if they don't have anyone who can take care of that position. Trey Norwood making a nice impression early. We are yet to see the Bills air it out. It's been all short passes. Now facing a nickel defense. Allen. And courts it to the outside. Caught by Knox. He's got enough. First down. Is that an area where they can get more production this season, the tight end spot? Without a doubt, it's an area that has huge improvement written all over it. Dawson Knox, I thought last year was going to make the jump, but he had injuries, had, to, had, had a, COVID, a bout, bout with COVID, never really got in gear until late in the season. This kid can run. If he gets consistent catching the football, that's another weapon for Buffalo and really helps out those wide receivers. He was a high school quarterback and a wide receiver and a track star in Brentwood, Tennessee. First down for Allen and the Bills. We'll hit the seven-minute mark of the second quarter. Three-nothing lead for Buffalo. Allen settles in. Off the hands of the intended target, Cole Beasley. Incomplete. And you notice how often early in this game Buffalo's going with what, five receivers and, and totally spread, no backs in the backfield. They want to get it spread out so they can identify where the pressure's coming from from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh can't run a lot of games that way. They just have to have the straight pass rushers. T.J. Watt not in the game at the moment. Highsmith and Ingram are your outside linebacker pass rushers off the edge. We asked him, pitch count or not? Mike Tomlin said he's going to keep an eye on him. Allen skies it. Hold it! midfield Emmanuel Sanders lays out for a 16-yard pickup and it's not just that he catches the ball watch how the veteran understands where he is on the field and is able to keep both feet down while making the catch so receivers call a stretch catch whether it's in the upfield open field or on the sideline Allen avoids the rush chucks it to the sideline Diggs makes his move upfield and a flag is down 
Stefan Diggs has enough for a first down. The question, will it stand? Penalty marker thrown all the way back at the 41. Holding. Offense. Number 60. Ten yard penalty. That's done. That is the veteran Mitch Morse. It negates that 10 yard pickup and back it up for the Bills. Right in the middle of the of the line. Mitch Morse, the center, working against Chris Wormley. And Wormley does a really nice job at the end of it of throwing his hands up to make sure the officials take their eyes there and notice where the hold was being, being occurred. T.J. Watt back on the field for Pittsburgh. Watt signed the five-year, $122 million deal. It was a four-year extension, so included in that package is the $10 million this year and then the guaranteed money. Devin Singletary makes a cut to the 45-yard line. Singletary, in his rookie season, averaged 5.1 yards per carry. Last year, dropped off to 4.4. I saw him this offseason in the preseason at training camp, and he looked like the rookie Devin Singletary. Bounces off the first guy, and now his vision takes, takes a precedence, and he sees the hole on the backside and gets to it quickly. In the hole, he's hard to get down. He'll make the first guy miss more often than not. Remember, this is a Pittsburgh defense that led the NFL in interceptions last season with 18. Nickel package, Allen. Deep shot, separation too far for Emmanuel Sanders. The 12-year veteran stretches the field on an all-out sprint, and Allen overcooked it. Uh, and you talked about how this crowd had a release here, right, to start the ball game. All the players that we talked to had the same conversation with us. We have to be able to manage that because our emotions are really going to be sky high because of this crowd. Everyone back, Josh Allen really pumped up on that throw. Just needed a little bit less, and they would have had six. Right there. Last season, Bill set a franchise record for points, total yards, passing yards. Third and 14. Deep drop. Allen fly down. Allen, flick of the wrist, dropped by Cole Beasley. May not have mattered with the penalty marker tossed at the 37-yard line. Holding. Offense number 76. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So the Bills will punt it. So that's John Feliciano, and you see it right there. See him wrapping up Cameron Hayward. See that big arm underneath Hayward's neck, number 97? That's where the cold, that's where the hold occurred, and that's where they found it. New acquisition, Matt Hawk came over from Miami, punting for Buffalo, Ray Ray McLeod, standing at the Pittsburgh 10, waiting for it. No rush. Left-footed punter. High kick, and this one is going to reach the end zone. So a touchback. Steelers will have it at the 20. 55-yard punt. Net of 35. 3-0. The Bills in front of the Steelers. Here at Highmark Stadium, 71,000 strong on hand. What's new about this Pittsburgh offense? Well, the man calling the shots. Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator, extensive collegiate background what are we going to see from this offense this season we're going to see a lot of shifts a lot of personnel groups a lot of motion we've seen some of that early in the game we'll see more as we go on a bunch there as roethlisberger connects with deontay johnson so look how the game began with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Look to the right side. Okay, that's Dan Moore as the starting left tackle. He's starting there outside of Chucks Okorafor, and then he shifts over, and then they also shift up the, the, the rookie tight end Pat Fryer move from left to right. Then you bring in some jet motion with Deontay Johnson before culminating with a handoff to Najee Harris. And you'll see a lot of that window dressing. But fundamentally, they want to run the football and get way better at doing that. They haven't run it well in the last three seasons. Big difference for Ben. The offensive coordinator is upstairs. That pass to the sideline is incomplete. Looking to get Chase Claypool involved. Matt Canada in his first year. College coach for 25 years. QB coach last year. Ben Roethlisberger told Chase Claypool, look, you have a chance to be a top three wide receiver. It's going to depend on your work ethic, your preparation, and your desire. Yeah, and there's a little bit of a grab there from Tredavious White. You know what Ben Roethlisberger would tell to Chase Claypool? It's being as strong as you are, you've got to run through those things. Play through. Don't expect the whistle. Don't expect the flag. Nickel package here for Buffalo. This is a third and four for the Steelers. 
They go empty from the gun. Pump, Roethlisberger loses the football and gets hit from behind. Addison with the pressure and pushing and shoving flags after the play. Steelers look to pounce on it. Roethlisberger did not feel the pressure from the backside. The question was a punch thrown at the end of that play as the whistle blew. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the offense. It's fourth down. We have unsportsmanlike conduct, number 11 on the offense. They're pulling the player off the pile. That 15 yard penalty is correction. After this is the goal, fourth down. There's the pressure from Rafael Addison, oh, excuse me, Mario Addison on the backside, punching it free. And then here's where the penalty came in. A little pushing and shoving, and end up calling it on Chase Claypool initially. As you see, Micah Hyde, he's going to stand up to him and go at it here early in the ballgame. Yeah, so a couple things there. The penalty works against Pittsburgh. Syracuse basketball fans are yeah. thrilled, by I the said, way. I said, I'm up here in this part of the state. Raphael Addison came <laughs> right to mind. Raphael Addison is watching the game somewhere going, what? I just got to mention. Raphael Addison is back. <laughs> if I go Leo Routens, it's time to take me out. Well, Tony Red Bruin in on the next series. How about Isaiah McKenzie returning to the sideline and returning to the field? McKenzie is hit after he brings it in and brought down at the 36-yard line. Good action here in this first quarter. Just not a whole lot of scoring. A leader in 5G. Bills had a phenomenal playoff run last year. Haven't been to the Super Bowl since 1993. It was their first conference championship game since 1993. Tied a franchise record with 13 wins set back in 1990 and 91. First down, Allen avoids, throws across his body, incomplete, nobody home. Four Steelers in the area. So what are we now, 14 plays in with Buffalo? Mm-hmm. 11 passes? Yep. So every year you restart, right? Every year you say, okay, what's going to be our identity? Talk with Brian Dayball, their offensive coordinator. Do you have one yet, Brian? He said, well, we got to find out. I think that they're going to their identity of last year. Playing to the strengths of Josh Allen and those receivers. The running game, we'll see it get sprinkled in. But they're still a pass-first team thus far. We asked Sean McDermott about the expectations. He said, look, we acknowledge it. Allen is going to tuck and run. Squeezes through a hole across the 45-yard line. McDermott's point is, hey, we're human. You should feel those emotions. You should feel that buzz. But the focus is still going to be on the process and doing all the things they did to get to this point. Absolutely, and that's the way that they can keep themselves controlled and centered with all the outside expectations and noise that swirls around this team. Have someone reported in eligible there? There's Brian Daybold, the offensive coordinator. They scored over 500 points last year. Flat out track meet here for the Buffalo Bills. It is Spencer Brown, rookie out of Northern Iowa, who is eligible for Buffalo. Extra lineman. Flea flicker. Allen knocked away at the last moment. Tremendous recovery by Sutton. Trying to fit that ball into Stefan Diggs. And now what do you do on a fourth and one? They're going to punt the ball away, but watch how well covered this is downfield. Flea flicker, one receiver in the route. He was double covered and he ended up breaking off his route. He was supposed to run it deep down the middle, realized he was covered, broke it out to the outside. Josh Allen read it, but so did Cam Sutton for Pittsburgh. So once again, it is Matt Hawk, now in his fifth year in the NFL. Likes to use that Aussie kick. Signed a three-year, five-and-a-half million dollar deal with Buffalo. Ray Ray McLeod at the 10-yard line. Trying to get the Steelers to jump. Didn't happen. Once again, no rush to speak of. This time, Hawk has a chance to place it and inside the 10. McLeod is buried. Could not get to the 15-yard line. Josh Allen wanted to go for it. Coaches made the decision 
to punt it away. Paramount Plus is the home of the world's game. Stream more than 2,000 matches live, including Serie A, UEFA Champions League, the NWSL, and CONCACAF qualifiers. Paramount Plus. Try it. Free. Look at that soccer cornered, man. It's beautiful. Got it nailed down. Right now, the Steelers trying to figure out a way to move the football. Yeah. New look offensive line. Still a bunch of weapons for Ben Roethlisberger. We saw Najee Harris get three carries so far. Roethlisberger sells the fake. Tosses to Juju Smith-Schuster. Catches it cleanly. And brought down by one of the top safeties in the game, Jordan Poyer, after a six-yard pickup. So the new faces. Let's not forget who they had. This was in the AFC wildcard game. Villanueva, Filer, Pouncey, DeCastro, Okorafor. The only player that's still in that spot. Okorafor with more Dotson, Green, and Turner stepping in. Two rookies and a second-year man. Trey Turner, the true veteran there. Five Pro Bowls under his belt, trying to recapture his form at right guard. Second down and four, running play. Harris gets stacked up. Keeps the legs churning for two yards. We asked him about being a rookie. After all his experience at Alabama, he said, it's all about the little things, the details, the nuances, and he recognizes that all of those things in your preparation and paying attention will make a difference in your performance here. Maybe you could get away with it at Alabama because they were just better yeah, than the teams they were playing. The good thing for him is he comes out of a program that emphasized those things. So it was a big leap for him to start to adopt them a little bit more. And this is a Steelers team, third and short. Now they've got Ben Roethlisberger back in his familiar shotgun formation. Motion man as Claypool settles in. They go trips to that side. Roethlisberger on time. Juju Smith-Schuster goes upstairs for the first down grab. It covers 12. An injured stealer on the play. It's Deontay Johnson. See how they use the formation there. We talk about Matt Canada, what he brings to the to the table. Deontay Johnson down in a little bit of pain. That bunch formation to create some indecision and doubt about who is covering whom downfield. And then they just take off and scatter. And Juju Smith-Schuster finds the dead spot. That looked a lot like what they did last year with Ben Roethlisberger. Shotgun, get it to his receiver. Deontay Johnson the team's leading receiver last season. We're checking on him. We'll be back in 30 seconds after this. Jake from State Farm. You here to jam? Air? No, just an inspiring singer-songwriter with my bandmates. Here, giving out that Rogers rate to regular folks like us. State Farm has rates that fit anyone's budget. Hmm, is that so? Mahalo, Kiki. In that case, this one goes out to an ex-best friend of mine who took my rate, just gave it away. For surprisingly great rates that fit any budget, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Deontay Johnson, they were checking out the right leg. Ben Roethlisberger has been in there the entire time. He's coming at you, number 18 in the black jersey, and he has a collision there. Looks like Matt Milano, the linebacker, inadvertently chips him off, but that's exactly what you want to do as a linebacker. You want to go ahead and cushion those guys and take that shot and knock them off of their routes. Deontay Johnson got a little bit more than that. But you notice it was third and short there, Ian. What Pittsburgh wants to get to eventually with this young offensive line is be able to run the ball on third and short. They haven't run the ball third and short in about three seasons. If they can get that back in their arsenal, then they get, that'll create better throws downfield for them when they want them. James Washington steps in for Deontay Johnson. We are under a minute to go in this opening quarter. Roethlisberger, swing it. Caught by Washington. He's got good speed. Angles to the outside, and he's out of bounds, short of the first down. Chased down by Micah Hyde. That's a gain of nine on the catch and run. And we're seeing more of Matt Canada's influence here early in this game. Watch this little ghost back, ghost fake back in the backfield. See Juju Smith-Schuster, instead of running a route, he comes back behind Ben Roethlisberger. So now you have to respect maybe it's a reverse. 
That keeps a defensive end or outside linebacker at bay on the backside, not with an all-out rush to the quarterback. And Roethlisberger rises up and throws a strike, second and short. We asked Mike Tomlin about Matt Canada and when he first noticed him. He said there was a Wisconsin game on television that caught his attention. You happen to have the details of that. Big Ten 2012 championship game. Wisconsin put 70 points on Nebraska with a lot of jet sweep. Melvin Gordon still running off of that jet sweep action. I think that planted a seed in Tomlin's head. Certainly did. NFL kickoff weekend start of the second quarter here in Orchard Park, New York. The Bills lead the Steelers three to nothing. That first quarter, a lot of ball control, not a lot of big plays on offense. Biggest play so far has been the McKenzie 75-yard kickoff return to open the game, set up the field goal by Bass. Najee Harris is engulfed. Couldn't get away from Big Ed Oliver. They expect him to take a major step forward in year three. And Pittsburgh really working hard on their offensive line, but in the offseason, the Buffalo Bills really wanted increased play from their interior defense, trying to slow down the running game. And you just identified one of the key guys, Ed Oliver. Not only do they want to be an upfield penetrator against the pass, they want him to play the run, as you just saw there. No star in the lay today. Out with a calf injury. He opted out last season. They believe they're going to get a huge boost from his presence once he's back. Third and five. Early second quarter. Rush coming. Roethlisberger. High and incomplete. Claypool was fielding it like a punt. And it never quite got there with the coverage from Levi Wallace. And what they were counting on was Chase Claypool to out-athlete Levi Wallace. Claypool listed as 6'4", 238. Wallace is 6'179". They wanted him to play over the top. But because of the nature of the route and the ball ended up coming in behind him because Ben Roethlisberger is trying to go a little bit back shoulder, Levi Wallace able to make a little bit of a play on the football. It is the Ray Dotto Award winner, Percy Presley Harvin. And that one is out of bounds. Just underway in the second quarter. We'll be back in 30 seconds right after this. finally buy that solid gold rocket ship whoa 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 do we have a rocket ship license we have six players going which means our probability of being passed is 92 percent five hundred thousand dollars we could buy a regular rocket ship <laughs> no more rocket ships feel the nfl action like never before download the DraftKings daily fantasy app and play free for millions in prizes Buffalo three, Pittsburgh nothing. This is actually the 28th all-time meeting. Steelers are 16 and 11 against the Bills, but Buffalo's won the last couple of matchups over the last two seasons. And Singletary is in there. Not much of a ground game so far, and Singletary is hit immediately after he picks up a yard. Alex Highsmith stepping into a big role in his second year from Charlotte. Edge rusher in college. So you've got Highsmith, Ingram working in rotation, replacing Bug Dupree. T.J. Watt in the game, number 90. Working the opposite side. Second down and nine. Allen on the money to Emmanuel Sanders. We asked Sanders about Allen. He said, the boy has become a man. He's been blown away by his development. NFL Today update, J.B. and Boomer. Seattle loves coming east. 12, 11 and 1 in their last 12 in that case, J.B. Russell Wilson, 5 to 6, 71 yards, 2 TDs. The second one to Gerald Everett, the former Ram tight end. They take a 14-3 lead to over the Colts. Ian likes traveling everywhere. Back to Ian Eagle. I do, and Russell Wilson, those passes travel quite nicely through the air, don't they? Pinpoint accuracy. Allen is on point. With his pass to Cole Beasley. You know, we asked Sanders about this wide receiver room, and he compared it to the 2010 Pittsburgh Steelers. He said there's just so much talent 
a lot of different personalities. And you think back to that 2010 Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver class. You had Heinz Ward, Antonio Brown, Mike Wallace, you had Antoine Randall, Eric, had Emmanuel Sanders. It was a stacked group. Certainly was, and it wasn't just that they were had a lot of personalities. A ton of accomplishments well as well. Allen designed and runs it right up the gut for a first down. Steelers believe they got the football at the end of the play. Cameron Hayward is there at the bottom of that pile. Have to see if it was working its way free before he hit the ground. I thought that he hit the ground and then the ball came free. Let's take a look. Josh Allen in there. The yep, ball was popped free on the backside. Now who comes up with the possession? Looks like Cameron Hayward with excellent hustle with a big right hand knocks it free. Yeah, Allen fell on the ball. Allen fell on initially that Hayward fought him for it. See, right there, ball's out. And look at how Pittsburgh is playing this game. Until Buffalo shows a commitment to the run, it'll be defensive backs all over the place, five and six at a time. Until they show different. Against the nickel. Tosses it to Diggs. Works to the outside, and Joe Hayden has been doing this a long time. 12 years in the NFL, three-time pro bowler with the coverage. A lot of teams, when they look at an alignment like the Steelers, they do what they call a box count. How many people are in the box in this area here defensively? And if it's a low box count, you try and run the football. Buffalo, they don't have as much interest in that as still getting the ball to their premier receivers on the perimeter. Allen will back off on a second and three. No, L! I got it! Fake it. Allen sets up. Unleashes. Deep ball. Incomplete. Stefan Diggs had two Steelers in the area, including Terrell Edmonds. That was well played by Edmonds because he was in coverage on the other side of the field and felt it. Watch Edmonds. He will come from this part of the field back to the middle. He feels the play, and look at him fall back into the coverage. And he and Fitzpatrick, as you described, Ian, on the scene in case there was a play to be made on the football. Should mention as well, Zach Moss is a healthy scratch today. The backup running back to Devin Singletary. We're yet to see Matt Breida on offense until now. Sidearm toss is too low. Allen tried to hit Beasley. And that brings up fourth down. And they're in no man's land right now. Yeah, and last time you remember when they were in deeper in their own field position, you remember Josh Allen was signaling to the sideline, let's go for it. And Sean McDermott didn't listen to him. He's now listening now as well. And that misfire, that's something they didn't have much of from him last year. Mm -hmm. First ball game, still early going. Everyone's still a little keyed up. As Keith Butler-led defense has lived up to the billing so far in the first half for Pittsburgh. Hawk. Looking for the corner. And a pretty good angle. The question is, where will it be marked out? And it's going to be at the seven-yard line. Josh Allen wanted to go for it earlier, wanted to go for it again. I get the sense he wants to go for it a lot. Bills in front, three to nothing. If you looked at question marks this year for Buffalo, pass rush was certainly one of the areas where they wanted to see improvement. Mm -hmm. Nobody had more than five sacks last season. That's why they drafted Greg Rousseau, number 50 in white out of the University of Miami in the first round. Also took Boogie Basham, who is inactive today. Roethlisberger in a crowd, and it's incomplete. Deontay Johnson is back in for Pittsburgh in double coverage. Looks like Micah Hyde, number 23, over the top, reading the play, and as it kept developing, he went ahead and went right to the receiver. He didn't even hesitate. Right there, made his break before the ball's even in the air, and helps knock it away. Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer, you mentioned it earlier, Iron, two of the better sets of safeties in this league. Now we asked Micah Hyde about the approach this season. He said, pretty bluntly, this is our window. This is our time to do it. It's a real family here, and there's this collective belief that this team has the right stuff to win it all. Second down and 10. Running play, Harris deals with the contact, and then the Bills charge. Forward progress will get him a gain of two. 
Taron Johnson, first man there, and then some help along the way to bring down big Najee Harris. And we'll see this improve as the season goes on, as these young offensive linemen get more and more settled. But right now, you notice the play calling. First down, deep in their own territory, let Ben throw it, try to create some space. Because the running game, still unproven. And they've got to find a way to get out of the shadow of their end zone. But they want to make sure they don't give great field position to Buffalo, turning it over. That's what Buffalo's trying to achieve. This is something Ben Roethlisberger didn't have to deal with last season. Crowd noise. And flags down. Roethlisberger just tosses the ball into the ground. Ball start. Offense. Number 69. After this is the ball, third down. You know the old expression? This is only going to encourage them more. About <laughs> the fans, right? Because they now feel like they've had an effect on the game. They've now inserted themselves into this ball game and created a problem for Pittsburgh. Listen to this noise come up again now. Third down and 12. Nickel defense for Buffalo. They pressed initially, back off, Roethlisberger throws up in the air, nearly intercepted. Edmonds had a shot at it, off the ricochet. All right, that was like a trap defense. They showed them what looked like man-to-man, -man. then they dropped in the zone, but they didn't drop deep. Taron Johnson, the nickelback, looked like he was going to the middle of the field, stopped short, and it was right there to make a play on the ball. And there's Tremaine Edmonds. The one thing he wants to add to his resume, not just more tackles, big plays, takeaways. Almost had one there. Taron Johnson had a pick six against Pittsburgh last season. Presley Harvey did, did not get all of that one. Harvin had it come off the side of his foot. And they're going to mark it off at the 35-yard line. 30-yard punt, ill-timed. Remember what Josh Allen wanted to go for it? Sean McDermott's telling him, this is why we didn't. The punt deep in the territory, defense held, shanked punt. Look at our field position now. Go to work, number 17. Let's check in with Evan Washburn. Well, Charles, to that point, in between that possession, Sean McDermott did come over to Josh Allen, offering some words of encouragement, kind of tap him on the shoulder. Calmness is the key word with Allen. He's at his best when he's playing calm. Yeah, and Josh mentioned that to us, Evan, uh, that he had a tendency to get overhyped. Little trickery doesn't fool the Steelers. Isaiah McKenzie met by Melvin Ingram. <laughs> you know what Melvin Ingram was saying on that play? What's that? We see this in practice every day for Matt Canada's <laughs> offense. Good point. Right? So they, they've drilled against this all summer long. And they run the jet sweep at him, and Melvin Ingram, the veteran, waiting for him. Have to get used to these new numbers. Yeah. Melvin Ingram is number eight. Yeah, it's almost like you're, it's, you're back doing college football. Yeah, a little bit. That's, that's what it is with the number situation. Allen is nine of 17 overall for 66 yards. Second and 13. Allen has the time initially, hit as he throws, and nobody home. Incomplete. T.J. Watt, the pressure on Allen. NFL Today update. Let's go to J.B. and Huma. Trevor Lawrence, nice first half. That's right, 18, 8 of 14, 120 yards. This touchdown pass right here to Chris Manhurts cuts the lead in half for the Texans as they lead 14-7 over the Jags. Back to Ian, Charles, and Evan. And we presume the first of many for the number one overall pick out of Clemson. I think he's the real deal. I think this is a big year for quarterbacks coming out. And look, Urban Meyer, everywhere he's been that first year, always better than what people think. Now it's third and 13. Allen steps up. Allen hit from behind. T.J. Watt, the ball is free. Loose football. Steelers believe they got it. Covered by the defense. First down. Cameron Hayward on the recovery. Look at Watt, number 90. He didn't feel like he played very well against Darrell Williams last year. Didn't really have the pressure he wanted. He came into this game with a mission. How about this pressure upfield? Allen tries to exit. Watt knocks it free. First turnover. New contract. Still making plays. Motor Trends Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. 
Now this Pittsburgh rush can feel like Niagara Falls. <laughs> T.J. Watt gained 10 pounds of muscle during the offseason. And he just used that muscle to jar the ball free. Roethlisberger faking toss to Juju Smith-Schuster. Breaks a tackle. And handles his business along the sideline. Eventually hit by Jordan Poyer. Now, some pass rushers, they read the offensive linemen. Some of them read the ball for the get-off. Watch the get-off T.J. Watt has here. Look out! Look how fast he is off of the snap. And he goes right through the upfield shoulder of Darrell Williams. Remember, he thought last year he didn't play very well against Williams. Williams had a pretty nice game. Huh, he affected the play there. Knocked it free. And hustling Cameron Hayward comes up with the recovery. He yeah, a first down after the good move by Smith-Schuster. Take the handoff, Roethlisberger tries to stay upright, tosses it as he was being slammed down on the play. Jordan Poyer, and it's going to be grounding. No intentional grounding. No intentional grounding. Second down. Roethlisberger said he's outside the tackle yep. box when he spun. Really intelligent veteran play by the quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. But you can see. It doesn't matter if he's year one or year 18 for Ben Roethlisberger, Ryan. How hard is it to get him on the ground? Jordan Poyer with a full 10-yard run. Can't get him down initially. That allowed Roethlisberger to throw the ball away. Poyer's given up 50 pounds in that matchup, literally. Checks in at 190. It goes down as a sack for Buffalo. So look where the line of scrimmage is now. Back to the 45-yard line. On the game, Harris has no room to operate. Chopped down for no gain on the play, with Ed Oliver sticking his nose in there, along with Taron Johnson. And with Star Lotulule out of the ball game, Ed Oliver taking a little bit of extra duty. And you'll have a rotation inside a defensive tackle with Harrison Phillips, 99, Vernon Butler, 94, Justin Zimmer, 61. But so far in the early going, Ed Oliver has upped his duties against the run here in 2021. Steelers were ranked dead last, running the football last season, 84.4 yards per game. They attempted more passes than any team in the NFL. This is a third and 20. Dime package for the Bills. Roethlisberger, soft toss, juggle, incomplete. Najee Harris couldn't secure it. And the Steelers, despite their best field position of the day to open up, will punt. And watch Ben Roethlisberger talking to the rookie, Najee Harris, because watch Harris as he comes through. His head's not around fast enough. Ben's already in the motion of throwing the football. Harris is late reacting, and it forces the incompletion. The coach, the quarterback, talking to the rookie going off the field. Five possessions, five punts. Harvin, end over end. Takes a roll for Pittsburgh. Will settle in at the nine. That's where the Bills will have it. 46-yard punt. Harvin gets it done. Ben Roethlisberger. He's going to be coaching up Najee Harris throughout the season. Steelers are down three. Steelers had a plus nine turnover differential in 2020. Number three in the league. They have forced the only turnover so far today, but couldn't do anything with it. Bills take over, first and ten, inside the Buffalo 10. TJ Watt getting a break, too, on this snap. On the give, Singletary tried to go airborne. And nothing there. Inside the NFL is now streaming the hardest-hitting team of analysts in football. Provide expert inside, exclusive commentary you won't find anywhere else. Stream new episodes Tuesday. 9.30 Eastern, exclusively on Paramount Plus. Jules is part of the team now, too, right? Julian Edelman. He is. New addition. Right from the field. Got the running back split out in Singletary. Trying to open up passing lanes. Bills looking to get something going here offensively. The grab by Dawson Knox. Good for a first down. 12 yards through the air. You asked the question earlier, Ryan, is there room for improvement from the tight end position? We go back to the playoff game. Is he, he's a runner, he's a passer, he's both when Dawson Knox caught that touchdown pass. They want more of these catches. 
consistent catching the football, key situations. If they get that, the offense continues to open up. They averaged 19.6 points per game in 2019. It jumped to 31.3 in 2020. Allen going through his progression. Flag is down. Ducks one low, incomplete. In the vicinity of Emmanuel Sanders, Ike Butker was in previously at right guard. Cody Ford is back in there for Buffalo. Expect yeah. John Hussey will fill us in on the penalty. Holding. Offense, number 73. 10-yard penalty. First down. And it's Deion Dawkins picking up that penalty. Yeah, expect to see that rotation continue with Butker and Cody Ford. It was like that all in camp. And look at Melvin Ingram with the pass rush. And he gets a hand up there high on him. Right there, you see Dawkins with a hand up on Ingram, and then a little takedown as well. We're at the 442 mark of the second quarter. A 3-0 lead for the Buffalo Bills. Team that went 13-3 last season. Allen, clean pocket, Cole Beasley. Hit by Devin Bush, and just a big story in and of itself for Bush to be back in the lineup for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He suffered that torn ACL Last season, we asked Mike Tomlin about him. He said, yeah, first preseason game, that Hall of Fame game, he looked a little tentative, but then in the second preseason game, he looked like himself. Got his confidence back, realized the leg was going to respond. And so far in this game, he and Joe Schobert rarely coming off the field. They're using three men up front, and then everything else is in the secondary. T.J. Watt is in there, patrolling the middle, delayed rush from him. Completion on the outside, but quickly covered. It's Devin Singletary, tossed down by Cameron Sutton. Sutton signed to a two-year, $9 million deal. Tough, hard-nosed corner out of Tennessee. And you notice how that penalty really changed things for Pittsburgh and what they were able to do defensively. The pass is caught. Gabriel Davis with the grab. A penalty marker down on the far side of the field. Josh Allen has got a rifle. Thirty-seven yards. Too many men on the defense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play. First down. So Josh Allen says 11, 12, 13. When I'm throwing it like this, go right ahead. Let's see what Pittsburgh's got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That doesn't work, not in this league. But it didn't matter to Josh Allen. He threw a flat-out laser right up the seam, and Gabe Davis caught it. Alualu is trying to get off the field. First down for Buffalo. Now it's two of seven on third down conversions. Allen's going to keep it. And Allen is hit down low. He tried to pull that fake on Arthur Mollett, and he's limited to a three-yard pickup. And what a blown opportunity for the Pittsburgh defense after the penalty against Dawkins, Ion. They have them backed up, have them in the shadow of their goal, uh, going end zone, and, and Allen helps get them out with that big throw downfield, and Buffalo's in business. Now, Deion Dawkins is now banged up. And his shoes, he's out of his shoe as well. Mm -hmm. Hard enough to stop those pass rushers when you've got them laced up just right. But if you throw a shoe, now you're on skates. You're not stopping a pass rusher at all. So Spencer Brown, the third-round draft pick from Northern Iowa, will step in. Brown was a high school tight end, defensive end. He gained 80 pounds in college, and he made the switch. He's a tight end in eight-man football. <laughs> and Mark Farley, the coach of Northern Iowa, saw him and said, son, we're going to make you a tackle. Mm. Northern Iowa did not play football last year. Second down and seven. Pocket collapsing. Timing route. Stefan Diggs with a catch and a penalty marker down at the 28. Hit by Cameron Sutton. Dawkins to come back now. Got his shoe on. Spencer Brown got his one play in. Three penalties against Buffalo, two against Pittsburgh. Offside. Defense, number 56. Five-yard penalty enforced from the previous spot. Remains second down. It is Highsmith who is looking for the advantage. And that's exactly right, I am, because Highsmith realized that Brown had just come off the bench. 
And that's an old adage in football. Brand new guy comes out, test him immediately. Find out what he's got. And Highsmith thought he could take advantage of him in the pass rush. It was a little bit too quick. They plays the football at the 28. Over, over, over. Second down and two for the Bills. Pulls the trigger. Caught. Stefan Diggs led the NFL in catches and receiving yards. 166 targets in 2020. And it's good for a first down. We've hit the two-minute warning in the second quarter from Orchard Park. Bills lead the Steelers 3-0. They are threatening now deep in Pittsburgh territory. What's changed for Buffalo offensively? To me, after the shot that Josh Allen threw to Gabe Davis, they've been much more consistent. Allen started this drive 9 of 18 for the game. He's 5 for 5 on this drive. Now they're starting to move the ball with consistency. He's got stops and starts. And those underneath routes are working. Yeah, the, the guys are catching the football, making plays, and continuing to move those chains. They have two minutes to play in this first half. Allen? Looking to run. Steelers had three defenders ready for him, and he's got a gain of one, led by Cameron Hayward and Mallette, also in there for Pittsburgh. Huge part of the scouting report for Pittsburgh coming in was that in key situations, certain, or certain spots, Josh Allen is going to be their number one runner, and Pittsburgh came in ready for it. And Keith Butler, the defense coordinator, said if he wants to run it all day, we will eventually treat him like a running back. Ninth play of the drive. Both teams have all three timeouts remaining. We've got 125 left on the clock. Allen will operate out of the gun. Allen. Underneath toss to Cole Beasley. He's tackled inside the 10 by Terrell Edmonds. This is why Cole Beasley was second team all pro last year. The ability to not just get open underneath, but turn it upfield and get more. Didn't do a lot of shaking and dancing there. Realized, hey, catch it, move it right upfield, get all I can out of that route. Had a career high, 82 catches, 967 yards last season. Third and one for Buffalo. Tight formation. Allen, that six foot five inch frame, he's got more than enough. Needed a yard, picked up three. First down, Bills, and a timeout call with 39 seconds left on the clock. That is what he did well with a 6-5 frame. He dropped it down in order to pick up the sneak. Coming up, Verizon Halftime Report. JB, Phil, Nate, Boomer, Coach Cower, the Hall of Famer, Coach Cower. And amazing that Coach Cower spent 15 years as the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Felt like an eternity. Mike Tomlin now in his 15th season as the head coach. It's all coming up, Verizon Halftime Report. Coach looking good. Looking good in his gold jacket, too. Oh, yeah. Fit him nicely. I, and if I ever made it to the Hall of Fame, I'd sleep in it. I mean, is, I mean, you kidding me? No question. Could you get a Hall of Fame robe? <laughs> if you ask for it instead? If you're in the Hall of Fame, they'll give you whatever you want. First and goal for Buffalo. Hey, right here. Motion man is Davis. His receiver's doing a nice job working underneath, making tough catches. 11th play of the drive. Allen looking. He will toss it through the back of the end zone and into the stands. And now we actually have fans here that can catch it. How about the coverage there by Pittsburgh? Josh Allen made the right play. This is a nice, smart move by Josh Allen because otherwise you're forcing it. There's Beasley being doubled right there. Now look in the middle. Gabe Davis. Terrell Edmonds is right there with him. Everywhere there's a white shirt eligible, there was at least one black shirt right there in the vicinity ready to make a play. Keith Butler, seventh year as the defensive coordinator for Pittsburgh, 19th year as a coach for the Steelers. Second and goal. Allen looks for an opening. Dives inside the five. The second effort after the initial thrust by Tyson Alualu was there to make sure he didn't hit Pater. This will be a 30 second timeout. So timeout taken, 27 seconds on the clock. Horizon halftime report. JB and the gang score. We'll create a run pass option for him. Buffalo trying to add points. Allen delivers. Enzo, it's caught. Gabe 
Gabriel Davis. Touchdown, Buffalo. Working against Cameron Sutton. Thought we would get Josh Allen a little bit on the move, but instead, he just makes a perfect throw. Coverage was not bad by Cameron Sutton. And here's T.J. Watt coming from the backside. Mm. With some pressure, Ty Smith on the front side, but Josh Allen stood in there firm and delivered. Davis, a legitimate red zone target at 6'2", 210 pounds, good size. In his second year from Central Florida, Allen goes 7 of 8 on the drive. The only incomplete pass, the one he tossed through the back of the end zone into the stands. That was such a well-thrown ball that Cam Sutton's on the scene. He's right there in good position, and the ball whistles past him, and Gabe Davis catches it. Normally in a situation like this, I would expect the ball to be up high and let Gabe Davis play basketball and go up over the top of Cam Sutton. That ball's thrown with such pace and in the perfect spot that Sutton's reactions, even though they're good, can't be quick enough. And Gabe Davis finishes it off. Yeah, we asked Josh Allen in his preparation for this game, how do you keep yourself under control? He said, I'm going to pop in my earbuds before the game and just listen to my music and get into the zone. So the na natural question is, what's what your you music? What are you listening to? to? His answer was surprising. He said, I'll have Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., and Elvis lined up. He said it puts him in the perfect mood. I think someone got into his earbuds before the game because the way he came out as fired up as he was, I don't think Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., and Elvis played in the pregame. I think he had a little more Nas or DMX or something going on because he was fired up. Josh Allen is 25 years old. <laughs> He's got the playlist of a 75-year-old. <laughs> or it works or, for him. Or, or me. Or you. Well, what's your age? What are you checking in at? I mean, 56. That's got to count, right? 13 plays, 91 yards, 5 minutes and 39 seconds. Steelers, they're just going to take a knee here and head into the locker room, trailing the Bills 10 to nothing. The Steelers have 54 yards of offense in the first half. Seven on the ground. Well, the Buffalo Bills, a team that won six straight to end the regular season last year, nine of their last ten, the only loss at Arizona. Trying to get off on the right foot here in 2021. 10-0 lead over Pittsburgh. Halftime is coming up after these first half highlights from Verizon and a word from your local station. Inspired to work out? Hey Siri, tell me more about Apple Fitness Plus. Getting ready for second half action here in Orchard Park, New York. The Bills with a 10-0 lead on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ian Eagle along with Charles Davis, Evan Washburn down on the sidelines. Defensive effort, strong one from both sides. What are your main takeaways from first half of action? Fans also back in attendance, which yeah. makes a huge difference. Well, that is my main takeaway, and thank you, fans. This is outstanding. The atmosphere is, is phenomenal, starting with Pittsburgh. We know what they're trying to get to in terms of running the football, yeah. establishing a presence, but they're not there yet, and I don't know that they're going to get there today. So this may go back to Ben Roethlisberger and be his football game. The numbers in that first half for Pittsburgh, these are humbling offensive numbers for a team that's used to moving the football, dynamic plays downfield. Only 54 total yards of offense, 188 for the Buffalo Bills, including 10 first downs. Pittsburgh minus two total yards in the second quarter. Steelers will receive the kickoff to open up this second half. Tyler Bass will do the honors for Buffalo. Ray Ray McLeod is the deep man, and this one boomed over his head. 
And a touchback. Check in with Evan Washburn. Well, I spoke to Mike Tomlin about what he wants to see from his offense in the second half. And he acknowledged, look, these are some challenging conditions for a young offense. But he feels like some chunk plays, some big plays will loosen things up, give him some confidence. He's impressed defensively with how they've handled things. Calling it varsity versus varsity. That was a big play by Gabe Davis. And he acknowledged that. As for Sean McDermott, that last drive, it feels like they just started to take what the defense would give them. And that was the difference. And guys, I tried to confirm if there was any Frank Sinatra in the locker room and keep <laughs> things calm. Couldn't do it. We'll work on it here in the second half. All right. Evan will fly you to the moon and we'll get that answer. <laughs> I, I think it worked its way in there on that last drive, the way that Josh Allen was playing. Out of the gun, they'll run it to Harris. And the first time that Harris got out into the open, a crease there for nine yards and pushing and shoving at the end of the play. A helmet was lost by Vernon Butler. And look at what we have here, Ian. Look at what we're going to get with these guys now getting a push with the blocking on the left side. Dotson, 69. And you get more, 65. Friar Muth, 88. The tight end rookie out of Pittsburgh comes from right to left and puts a, puts a Buffalo Bill on his back. That's a good, strong run and a confidence builder for that offensive line. Kendrick Green and Vernon Butler got into it at the end of that play as Harris tries to pick his way for a first down. And it is enough, a two-yard gain for Najee Harris. And I am that, what you just talked about, Kendrick Green, the rookie out of Illinois. Let's keep an eye on that because he talked to himself about being emotional and making sure he played on an even keel. And Ben Roethlisberger wants him to do that and just take care of his job and not worry about other extracurriculars. Roethlisberger steps up in the pocket, avoids it, throws, intercepted, picked off by White. And a flag down at the 48-yard line. Roethlisberger trying to extend the play. And also trying to point out holding in the secondary that he believes happened downfield that'll wipe away that interception. Well, from White's reaction, that seems to be the initial indicator. Prior to the pass, holding defense, number 27. Five-yard penalty, automatic. First down. And it's White, the guilty party. And you know how quarterbacks do such a good job nowadays of realizing they have an advantage? There's a penalty, so you go ahead and take a shot. Ben knew that there was a penalty for a hold downfield, so he went ahead and tried to make a play anyway. He wasn't worried about it. People at home were like, why did he throw that one? Yeah. He threw it because he knew he had the advantage, and if it worked, great. If not, we're going to be okay. Yeah, there's a savviness that Ben has always had, but when you're in the league 18 years, you know things. Roethlisberger tossing to traffic. Deontay Johnson emerging after the catch. And he got caught from behind by Taron Johnson. Six yards on the pitch and catch. Just some numbers that first half. Pittsburgh had seven total rushing yards on their first two plays on the ground. Nine yards on the ground. So already they've topped the first half total. Doesn't sound like a lot before an offensive line trying to gel. That felt really good to them. Second down and four. Shotgun. Roethlisberger, sidearm, soft toss is incomplete. Trying to hook up with Juju Smith-Schuster, who signed a one-year, $8 million deal during the offseason. Had some bigger money offers elsewhere, decided to come back to Pittsburgh. Steelers now facing a third down. I think that as this half goes on, as Mike Tomlin told Evan Washburn, we're going to have to get some chunk plays. I think that Matt Cannon is going to be looking at that, trying to block up, block them up, and throw it downfield because the Buffalo defense is really crowding the line, and the defensive backs are approaching the line of scrimmage. Chase Claypool does not have a catch here this afternoon. Got 10 bills in my picture right now. Third and four. Roethlisberger steps up, throws on the move. It's caught. Inside the 35, the tight end Eric Ebron has got a first down for the Steelers. How about the movement of Ben Roethlisberger in the pocket to keep this alive, but he was willing to take the hit to make the completion. Look at that. And he takes the hit at the end, but because of his movement, created that extra time. Yeah, he took the hit from A.J. Epinesa. But how about the completion downfield? 18 years in the league. He knows he's going to take a shot or two. But he'll gladly give that up for the completion downfield. Steelers finally have something cooking here on offense. 
First down at the Buffalo 34. Roethlisberger timing right down the sideline. Oh, what an adjustment. Chase Claypool. First down. Working against a pro bowler, Tredavious White, and he wins the battle for 22 yards. In the first half, they tried to do this, and the ball was a little, or the ball ended up having to be a back shoulder fade, and Levi Wallace made a play. Here, Chase Claypool goes over the top, and he also had room on the sideline to work with, and took advantage of it. Roethlisberger. On the money, Deontay Johnson tries to make the cut up field, and Wallace there to bury him for Buffalo. And look at the, see, when Claypool goes up over the top, White never sees the football, but he was able to do that this time because he had some room to work with. See where he is on the field? In the first half with Levi Wallace, he was almost on the sideline. No room to work, no chance to go over the top. Claypool Beautifully throwing ball as well. He had nine touchdowns last season, receiving two on the ground. Steelers operating inside the 10. Second and five. They trail 10-0. Handoff. Najee Harris, spin move, and he's met just before he hit the five. Those holes close quickly at this level. Micah Hyde among those there for Buffalo. It's third down. Four new brand new offensive line. Four brand new offensive linemen from last season, the way the things ended. A rookie tight end and fire move coming in who can do it, who does a nice job blocking as well. I expect Ben to actually throw the football in this situation though. Nickel package for Buffalo. Steelers trying to get on the board. Roethlisberger pulls the trigger off the hand of Najee Harris. Incomplete. And a field goal unit. Coming on for Pittsburgh. Look. Harris trying to elevate and bring that one in. But remember, Ben Roethlisberger was on the move and under a little bit of duress as he tried to make that throw. That ball's down a little bit. Without that pressure, he's got a chance, but there's a lot of pressure in his face. Yeah, the heat came from Vernon Butler. 24-yard attempt. The chip shot is good for Chris Boswell and the Steelers at their first point of the day. They put three on the board, opening series of the third quarter. Ten play, 69-yard drive for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Culminates in a Boswell 24-yard field goal. They top their yardage total from the first half on their first possession of the second half. Return man McKenzie, not going to touch it this time. And the Bills will have it at the 25-yard line. On Tuesday, the Pittsburgh Steelers held Heroes at Heinz Field, an event to give back to veterans by hosting them for an evening of fun and football. This is the 13th year the Steelers have hosted this event, dedicating their time to the heroes that have served our country. Fantastic. Which is fantastic. great to have the NFL back. The added element of fans in seats, the sounds that we've grown accustomed to through the years, would have vibe today here in Western New York. First down. Allen throws to Stefan Diggs. Keeps the legs chugging. And he's ruled out of bounds short of the first down, James Pierre along that sideline for Pittsburgh. As we start the second half, it appears to me for Brian Dable, the offense coordinator of Buffalo, totally unconcerned with whatever Pittsburgh wants to do on defense. He feels like he's going to win a matchup somewhere by spreading these receivers out. Someone's going to win along the line, and he'll take Josh Allen throwing it and not too concerned about the running game over anything else. Allen on second and three. Too high. It's incomplete. Over the head of Diggs. Charles, as we know, there is a bond between Sean McDermott and Mike Tomlin going back to their college days at William and Mary. Not just the collegiate bond, but the man that they played for in college, Jimmy Laycock, a Hall of Famer, and had such an impact on both McDermott and Tomlin during their respective careers at William and Mary. And they both lean on him to this day. Yeah. All of these years later. 
third down and three. Allen converts to Stefan Diggs. Nine yard pickup. So Jimmy Laycock, look at that run from 1980 to 2018. And he had the honor of being on the field in Pittsburgh with his two guys, McDermott and Tomlin. McDermott said he remembers exactly where he was when Mike Tomlin got the head coaching job with the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was on the stairs of his townhouse in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. He said it's a source of pride and inspiration. The connection that he has with Tomlin, Emmanuel Sanders for nine yards, more from Evan. Well, guys, I spoke with Coach Laycock this week, and he might be at his house now. He may have started the game at a local establishment, as he told me, <laughs> but he loves watching his two former players from the coaching side of things, especially down the stretch of that first half, the time management. He said it's tough. He's like a father. He doesn't want either to win, but he just wants both teams to play well. He's immensely proud of both. Yeah, no doubt about it. Second and one. That's a first down run for Devin Singletary. So finally, a little bit of rhythm here with the mix and match from Buffalo. It's been mostly Allen through the air, but you still have to blend in the run game here and there, although it hasn't been a big part of the game plan so far for Buffalo. No, they're a throwing team that mixes in the run occasionally, just enough to try and quote-unquote keep you honest. But he really believes, I, I know Brian Dable believes, I spread this out, one of these terrific receivers of mine is going to win their route, and Josh Allen should find it. These two teams played week 14 last year, a 26-15 win for Buffalo over the Steelers. Allen steps up, throws the long ball, incomplete. Joe Hayden in coverage. Emmanuel Sanders, the intended target. I, I think we do need to get Evan on the case and find out what was played at halftime as well. Because Josh Allen is throwing some real shots downfield, but the accuracy isn't there right now. The last two throws, one was behind Diggs on the, on the pattern to the outside of the field, and that one there well over the top. Yeah, we asked Josh Allen, what'd you focus in on during the offseason? And then he reeled them off. Shallows. In cut, unders, overs. That was an in cut right there that was missed. Had an opportunity. Second down and ten. Buffalo in Pittsburgh territory. A delay there on the give, and it's Brita getting an opportunity. Formerly with San Francisco and Miami, he is very fast and understands how to work those angles. He picks up seven. And, and over time, they'll be able to get Breida more integrated into this offense. And the way that they spread things out, Ian, that's what Breida will want. All he needs is a crease, and he's at top speed on his second step. Nicknamed the Cheetah, he can break off some big runs. Devin Singletary, much more quicker than fast. I get it, Breida the Cheetah. <laughs> I like rhymes. Yeah, I, was yeah. I, got, I like rhymes, I like alliteration. <laughs> Third down and three. Allen will do it himself. Can he get to the spot? He takes a shot right at the end of the play. And it's right at the line to gain. Minka Fitzpatrick came over defensively. It's enough for a first down. But Pittsburgh's playing this well. See how they stay at the line of scrimmage? Everyone's squared, shoulders aren't turned. But the power of Josh Allen gets him the first down. See, he finds just enough of an open space before Fitzpatrick can put him down, but he carries his way to the first down. He is Buffalo's leading rusher. Seven carries, 30 yards. Bills are on the move. Allen under duress. It's a low throw to Gabriel Davis, incomplete. 6.41 to go in the third. Seven-point lead for the Bills, second and 10 for Buffalo on this drive. I saw Josh Allen just clap his hands in a little bit of frustration. He's not quite in sync right now. The way he ended the half, I thought might carry over to the second half. Sharp down the stretch. That last throw for a touchdown to Gabe Davis. Here on this drive, not quite the same as we saw to end the first half. Roethlisberger waiting for his chance to get back out there with the offense. Josh Allen signed a six-year, $258 million deal during the offseason. Look at T.J. Watt. They've got him moving all over the place trying to find a matchup to rush. It's a running play. And there is no cutback for Brita. T.J. Watt sniffed it out. It is. Watt might need a moment. It took a little while getting up. Appears to be okay. They essentially use him as an inside linebacker here. See how he moves up stacking in the middle? Trying to just find the open gap. And as soon as he sees it, 
sprints his way through it and leads the charge with Hayward up to finish it off. Buffalo Bills were number one in the NFL on third down last season, just under 50% conversion rate. They were one of six on third. Since that point, they've converted on their last five. This is a third and eight. Fake the run. Allen in the air. Incomplete. Beasley nearly got it initially and then off the deflection. Minka Fitzpatrick holds up in coverage. Showed a nice coverage there. Then they showed man. Then they dropped in the zone. And watch Fitzpatrick 39. He's working underneath right in here. Gets his back to him and then finds the football. A lot of times you're taught as a quarterback, if the defensive back, if his back is turned, you go ahead and throw it. Because Patrick still got his head around in time. They'd be looking at a 53-yard field goal attempt, but the Bills are going to go for it. Last year, 8 of 10 on fourth down conversion. This is fourth and eight. Allen, deep shot, incomplete. Three Steelers there. Gabriel Davis, the intended target. And Cameron Sutton makes the play for Pittsburgh. And Davis is limping back to the Buffalo sideline. So the Steelers take over. The defense does it again. They trail by seven. Charles, how about that call on fourth and eight going for it? Yeah, had no problem with it all where they were on the field. This is a team that's used to pressing it. I wasn't surprised at all that they went for it on fourth down. Steelers made the play defensively. Now they take over. Roethlisberger has it knocked down. Edmonds blitzing on the play. See, that's how Tremaine Edmonds will go from all from Pro Bowl to All Pro. More impact plays. Look at him coming off the edge right in the face of Ben Roethlisberger. He's going to get a lot of tackles. He averages about 115 tackles a year. That's not the issue. What they want from him are plays that change games. Forced fumbles. Interceptions. Knocking passes down, sacks. Second down and 10. It's plenty, of course, Terrell Edmonds of the Steelers. Chase Claypool with the catch, his second of the day. And they're going to mark him just a little bit short. This is how Pittsburgh has operated best today is when the ball's out of Ben Roethlisberger's hands fast. It allows that young offensive line to get out in open field and hit people. They don't have to hold blocks and protect the quarterback. They get downfield and clean people up. And when he gets rid of it fast like this, you don't have to hold up in pass protection for very long. Remember last year, Ben Roethlisberger led the league in how fast the ball got out of his hands on passing plays. That's been most, most effective for them here this afternoon as well. Third and half a yard. That's enough. Najee Harris leans in for two. Levi Wallace will get credit for the tackle. When we talked to Najee Harris, we asked him, who'd you like watching? So, oh, I, I go old school. I'd watch highlights of Gail Sayers and Walter Payton. But then he got to high school. Yeah. And he said, I stopped watching the highlights. I wanted to figure out how the guys made those highlights based on their workout. He started watching workout videos, particularly Adrian Peterson. Yeah, that, that's a workout video that most people shouldn't watch because Why? you feel really bad about yourself. <laughs> yeah. But Najee Harris could do that and could start to emulate those types of workouts. The things that Adrian Peterson used to do in his workouts are ridiculous. New set of downs for the Steelers. Shotgun, Roethlisberger moves the pocket, hits his man. Oh! Juju Smith-Schuster got stamped! A big hit. Matt Milano over there defensively for Buffalo. Milano stays in low in the coverage, reads it, comes off of his coverage, and there's a nice pop, and look how he did it. The way you're supposed to in 2021. Shoulder first, in the proper strike zone, and the ball pops free. Matt Milano grew up as a safety. Ended up doing that at Boston College for a while before moving forward to linebacker. And made a decision to come back here to Buffalo despite being a free agent. Thought this was the best fit for him. And boy, are they thrilled he made that decision. He got rewarded to the tune of four years, $44 million to re-sign with the Bills. Second and ten. Roethlisberger lines it up downfield. Big play. Fryer move. The rookie out of Penn State. And it's a first down for Pittsburgh. 24 yards on the hookup. And how about this play? Because Ben Roethlisberger, again, pocket movement enough to keep the play alive and allow Fryermuth to get open. And at the end of the play, applauded his offensive line and told him, great job. 
First down, fake the run. Roethlisberger not on the same page with Deontay Johnson. He stopped. Roethlisberger was leading him, and it's incomplete. And when they watch film, and Ben's talking to him right now because he knows that he's continuing to nurture some of these young receivers and bring them along, I will bet it was Deontay Johnson doing the wrong thing. But don't be surprised if Ben Roethlisberger comes right back to him. He doesn't like to let these young receivers lose their confidence, and he wants to show them that they're still in the game. So when he gets back out there, I'd expect one to go Johnson's way. Steelers looking for their first touchdown with Matt Canada calling the plays. They trail 10-3. Claypool, end around, big play. Claypool inside the five. Fryer moved with the block out front. And Claypool nearly popped it for the score. Last year, a number of Claypool's big plays in the running game were on jet sweeps. This one, a pure reverse. And look how it's set up. Okafor, Okorafor, 76 with a nice block. Look at Kendrick Green, 53 out there running and leading. Nice call by Matt Canada, well executed. First and goal for Pittsburgh. Steelers knocking on the door. Hand it to Harris, stutter stick move. Harris trying to cut it back and he's denied. Davius White, first man there, he got some help. It's a loss of one on the play. You know, last year in college, Najee Harris led the nation in, in forced, uh, forced missed tackles. But as you noted earlier in the game, things are a little bit different in the NFL. Able to slide and move in college, often make extra people miss. Here, white shirts show up, and they don't. Is the Bills defense up to the test here around the goal line. Ninth play of the drive. Second and goal. Roethlisberger. Couple of pumps. Darts it. End zone. Popped up in the air. Incomplete. Ebron got his hands on it. And snuffed out by the Bills defensively. Taron Johnson. Notice where Ben Roethlisberger wanted to go initially with the football. To the right side. And that's where Najee Harris was split out. Out of the backfield. Has to come back. And Taron Johnson stays with Eric Ebron. Might have had a little... Little jersey there at the bottom of it, but no call at all. Taron Johnson makes a play. Third and goal for the Steelers. Got Harris split out again out of the backfield in the slot to the formation right. Roethlisberger. Step. Rifles it underneath. Caught. But Harris can't get there. Picks up four, and it's fourth and goal. Field goal unit coming on. Another nice play by Matt Milano because Najee Harris, this is one of the things that you'll see continue with the Steelers as the season goes on. They will integrate him more and more into their passing attack. And they had him there, isolated against a linebacker. But as I noted before, Milano was a safety who moved up the linebacker. Still has those good coverage skills. Does a nice job there near the goal line. And another short kick for Chris Boswell. This is the old extra point from 20 yards away, and he drills it. Pittsburgh inches closer. The Bills maintain the lead with a minute 47 to go in the third. We expected a battle. We are getting exactly that. More action coming up from Orchard Park, New York. The NFL on CBS. Major turnaround for the Pittsburgh offense in this second half. They put up 126 total yards after being limited to 54 in the first half. And now trail the Buffalo Bills 10-6. Boswell will kick it off. With Isaiah McKenzie deep. Coming out to the 25-yard line for Buffalo. Help support Hurricane Ida recovery efforts in the Gulf and Northeast. Visit NFL.com slash auction to bid on authentic and game-worn items and support the Gulf Coast Renewal Fund and American Red Cross. Text IDA to 90999 to donate $10 to American Red Cross Hurricane Ida Relief. See what Buffalo does here. See if there's any type of an adjustment that they're going to make. Still showing five wide receivers with Singletary, the running back, at the top of the screen. Push backs off. 
Allen slings it, caught by Beasley, dives for a first down. On the lunge, that's enough across the 35-yard line, good for 12 yards. And I think more than anything, it's not as much an adjustment, it's just being more precise. If they can just be more consistent throwing the ball underneath, because, you know, they started to have a few misfires, they could still run the same offense they've been running throughout the game. Counting down to one minute to play in this third quarter. Allen works from the gun. Allen knocked down. Josh Allen is big, six foot five, but so is the Steelers' front, including one Cameron Hayward. Now, how many plays have you called his name today that aren't a sack or a tackle? Right? He's knocked the ball away a couple of times. He's forced a fumble. He's recovered a fumble. He's applied constant pressure in the interior of the defense. And remember, Pittsburgh is really just rushing four and playing coverage behind it, keeping Schober and Devin Bush, both linebackers, on the field most of the time. Four straight Pro Bowls for Cameron Hayward. Come on, come on, come on. on the Steelers squad. Second and ten. Single Terry trying to string it out. And he is hemmed in by Devin Bush and company. You think back, Charles, last year, most combined points per game in NFL history. If you look through all the games during the season, 49.6 combined points per game. And we got the fans back, starting to feel like normal again. And we got 16 points today. Yeah, well, the football gods like defense. Yeah. They yeah, they're right. <laughs> they're like, you know, we'd like to see a little. And we're giving it, they're giving it to us here in the first game. 30 seconds left. Third quarter. Third and long for Buffalo. Allen steps up. He's got a running lane. He will take it. And he's got the first down. Makes a move upfield. We know he's still a dual threat. Dangerous when he can ad lib and use that scrambling ability. 11 yards. This is how good Josh Allen is. Pittsburgh had everything they wanted, and he made Mika Fitzpatrick miss in the open field. Time has run out here at the third. This will be the final play. A floater out of bounds from Allen, and we head to the fourth. The Buffalo Bills and the Pittsburgh Steelers in a tight one. Fourth quarter is next on CBS. It has been glorious, 71,000-plus here at Highmark Stadium. Start of the fourth. Allen throws complete to Stefan Diggs. How he changed this Buffalo offense, his presence, and the confidence that it gave Josh Allen, not just on the field, but I felt like their relationship changed Allen's whole approach, that he is one of the best in the NFL. Diggs would tell him that continuously. I think Stephon Diggs, from the time he hit town, that was his mission, to bond with Josh Allen, give him that confidence, and then, of course, he gives him great catches downfield. What are we doing? This is now a third and three. And they go with a run. Brita had a head of steam, and he gets hit before the line to gain. Now what do you do? Minka Fitzpatrick. Go for it. Help save the first down. Yeah, you're going for it here because that's who you are, the Buffalo Bills. Remember how Fitzpatrick missed Josh Allen in the open field on third and 11? He didn't miss, miss Matt Breida there. They're going to go for it here, and that doesn't surprise me one bit. They're bringing in Spencer Brown, number 79, a big extra tackle. 79 is the point is eligible. 79. Here, here. So on fourth and one. Tight formation. Allen throws it backwards, and none of that worked. The timing just felt off, and Cameron Sutton comes charging in for Pittsburgh. A gargantuan stop for the Steelers on fourth down.
Charles, what was Buffalo's thought process on that fourth down call? One of those things where you would just think quarterback sneak with Josh Allen, but they were trying to get a big play out of it because they were showing everything that said short yardage run. Extra offensive tackle, tight ends, fullback in the game. They were trying to get cute and get a big one. Steelers take over out near midfield. Blown up on the play, Zach Gentry. A loss of two. So watch Cam Sutton right here because what he does is he sees everything the entire way. Remember how I said the whole thing was tight formation, looks like a short run? They faked the quarterback draw. They were trying to get the big play there, but Sutton was able to spot it the whole way. Back-to-back -back big plays by Cam Sutton on the previous series on third down. Excuse me, on fourth down, knocked the ball away. Then he gets that big one there on fourth down. Bills are 0 of 2 on fourth down today. Last year, they only failed twice all season. They went 8 of 10. Second and 12. It's a running play for Harris. Cuts to the outside, takes a hit, stays on his feet, takes another shot from Edmonds, and brought down as White helps slow him down. It's a five yard pickup and a lot of hard work from Najee Harris to get the five. They're showing his toughness, though, isn't he? I mean, he hasn't had many holes to run through in this game, but he stayed with it. Hasn't tried to bounce things out and hit a home run on each run. And when there was a crease, Turtle threw it and took advantage. So yeah, they've seen a lot of these third downs and six and seven. Converting has been a challenge for Pittsburgh. Chaco, Roethlisberger, launches in the air. Claypool can't catch it. Flag down. Levi Wallace, the Buffalo defender. And he had good position, but he never got his head around, didn't seem to be playing the ball, and typically that pulls the flags out of the pockets of the officials. See, he's looking right into Claypool, and now he's into his frame a little bit. And that's where the flag came out. Now, if he had his head back towards the quarterback... Pass interference. Defense. I'm firmly convinced that in that whole coverage, if he just turns his head back, there's no flag. But because of that, they just never sees the football. It turns into a 26-yard penalty. Looked like one official was going to let it go. Yes. And the other official tossed the flag on the play. It's the subtle movement. If you just look back for the football, they'll let you get a little handsy inside. But if you never look for it, typically the flag comes out. So now Pittsburgh is inside the Buffalo 25. On the ground, Najee Harris has some room. Harris accelerates. Bang down at the five. By far the best run of the day for the rookie Harris. Edmonds with a tackle, 18-yard rip. Now watch this run by Harris because watch how it's blocked as the ball's handed off to him. Now watch him. Stop right there. Now he's got the vision, and he sees where the gap is, and he's gone. Matt Milano trying to come and make the play, but Harris is one step ahead and deep into the secondary. Good vision by the rookie out of Alabama. First and goal for Pittsburgh. Steelers looking for their first lead. Roethlisberger. End zone. Corner. Adjustment, Deontay Johnson. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Against Levi Wallace. Johnson with the concentration and the score. The toe drag confirms it. Look at the concentration by Deontay Johnson, who had issues last year with drops. By all accounts, led the league in drops. Depends on what number, what poll you looked at, but led the league in drops. And he had that play not too long ago where we talked about, hey, I think Ben Roethlisberger will come back to him. And he did. And what a play Deontay Johnson made. Spent the entire offseason working with a tennis ball machine. Trying to get his hands better. The extra point from Boswell is good. 13 unanswered for the Steelers. They've got a three-point lead here in Orchard Park.
back at Highmark Stadium, 13-10. The Steelers on top of the Buffalo Bills. A lot of time left, 11-19 on the clock. Sean McDermott, three and one as a head coach in season openers, but all three of those wins have come against the Jets. Steelers, they have put forth a fantastic defensive effort, and the offense has come along. We've seen a little more flash and rhythm in the second half. At halftime, I thought that Pittsburgh would have to pretty much put it in the hands of Ben Roethlisberger in the second half. And they've done that to an extent, but I did not foresee Najee Harris and the offensive line coming together the way they have in the second half to give them more plays. Returnable for McKenzie. He is tripped. As he crossed the 20-yard line, they're going to mark him down just short of the 25. Saturday, 3.30 Eastern, the SEC on CBS. Marquee matchup in the swamp. Number one, Alabama takes on 13th right Florida. We catch a set for kickoff starting at 2.30. The drive to Atlanta, followed by college football today. All coming up Saturday on CBS. That's the type of game where they could play twice this year. Opposite divisions in the SEC. All right, Najee Harris will probably be watching. On no Saturday? Question. No question. Again, T.J. Watt moving around, showing different looks, number 90 in black. Open up with a nickel defense. Beasley the catch, and immediately hit by Devin Bush, Jr. Four-yard gain through the air. And you mentioned that nickel defense that Pittsburgh's been playing. They've been in it most of the ball game. They have such confidence in their linebackers. Number 55, Devin Bush. Number 93, Joe Schobert. And to what they're doing with T.J. Watt, his ability to move in different spots, middle of the field, off the edge, trying to find the favorable matchups to rush the quarterback. A lot of short passes today for Buffalo. Let's see if they loosen things up. Second and six. Allen uncorks it. Knocked away. Pierre jars it loose from Sanders. Rolling on the field is an incomplete pass. Third down. And I really thought you were going to continue that line in French, partner, because <laughs> Pierre oui. comes over. We oui, we. Oui. I mean, how about that great play coming from the outside as, a, as an outside corner, seeing the throw in the seam and knocking it away, knocking it out of the hands. It looked like it's going to be a completed yeah, pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took Spanish in high school. Sorry. <laughs> Third and six. What? What? Shotgun here for Allen. Rush coming. Allen steps up, runs into a wall. Cameron Hayward. And the play is whistled dead. The Steelers unleash the curtain. How about that? They formed a pincer on Josh Allen because the pressure came from the outside, and Cameron Hayward stayed at home, stayed inside. And when Allen stepped up, number 97 was there to greet him. That was really good coordinated pass rush by Pittsburgh. The outside forcing him to step up right into the waiting arms of number 97. And it is Matt Hawk on to kick it. Pressure. Hawk has it blocked. It's scooped up and a score. Touchdown. Ulysses Gilbert, the third. Big play for the Steelers. Danny Smith's troops, the special teams coach, they put on a block and right up the middle. Excellent job there, number 28, Miles Killebrew, who came over from the Detroit Lions. Gets through, takes the ball off the foot of Matt Hawk. And there's Ulysses Gilbert, who's a tremendous special teams player, finally healthy after having two back injuries last season. He high steps his way in for another score for the Steelers. Extra point is good for Boswell. And all of a sudden, the Bills are at a 10-point hole. And all three phases for Pittsburgh having a major impact. Watch up the middle. They looped it around, but what Killebrew did was he had the initial contact and everyone kind of bypassed him. You know, they had him held up in the beginning, and then they moved and Killebrew took advantage. Makes the block. Juju Smith-Schuster celebrating, as you would expect. And Big Ben Roethlisberger, who's rallied his team. How about this leadership? 38 years old, 18th year in the league, a bunch of kids surrounded him. Yeah, kids, get players calling you coach. 
<laughs> and he's like, fine, call me coach. I'm good. I will coach you up. And he's got his team out ahead 20 to 10. Second turnover for the Buffalo Bills. And this place has gone silent. Still 945 on the clock with the Bills offense is used to big plays striking downfield. A lot of time left, but they've got to get it going now. Score in the second half, 20 to nothing. Pittsburgh. Steelers won the AFC North last season. Somehow that was forgotten amidst all of the preseason prognostications. You know, you know what else we haven't talked about much as this game's gone on? That offensive line with the two rookies. Yep. They've Holding done a up. good enough job. Holding we, up. There's no real discussion about it right now. The Steelers are playing their seventh straight away game in week one. The last time they had a home game to open the season was 2014. McKenzie. And he's hit at the 25. Dropped at the 26. And it is Mallette who gets it done on special teams. Brian, how about this fourth quarter? You just mentioned 20 points for the Steelers. But there's a fourth down stop. Cam Sutton in there to spill the play. And then comes back, and Deontay Johnson comes back from a previously down play to a touchdown. And then how about the block there by Miles Killebrew and Ulysses Gilbert with the skip, with, excuse me, with the scoop and the score. And the Steelers 20 unanswered here in the second half. Allen from the gun, working quickly, hits his man, Dawson Knox, another underneath route, hauled in at the 32 for seven. And now let's watch how this Pittsburgh defense decides to play things because they've done a good job of not giving up big, big plays throughout the game. They will play top down now. You want to throw it underneath, great. But they're going to rally and make tackles. Take the run, toss it to the outside, and Stefan Diggs stood up at the 45. That's good enough for a first down. And some words being exchanged between Fitzpatrick and Diggs, two of the best at their respective positions in the NFL. We'll check in with Evan. And Charles, it's fun to watch this defense work on the sideline, hand-in-hand -hand with head coach Mike Tomlin. Obviously, he made his name in this league as a defensive coach, and he's been in their ear all game, especially Joe Hayden. They seem to orchestrate things in between series. Yeah, they got a nice connection with each other. Joe been a Steeler now for a number of years. He speaks Coach Tomlin fluently. Running play to Devin Singletary. He gets pushed backwards, but forward progress will get him just shy of the 50. It's a six-yard gain for Singletary. And Cameron Hayward just came into the game, guys. Got a little bit of rest. He's coming back in to try and plug any holes that they have in the middle of the defensive front. Hayward playing his 150th career game for the Steelers. Again. Room for Singletary. Dumped at the 35 by Edmonds. Devin Singletary can shift gears. He's undersized with very elusive 15 yard gain. And Brian Dayball has shifted play calling and his offensive lineman rewarded by firing out and creating space. There's Dawkins 73, Feliciano 76. Also out there was Cody Ford 74 to create that hole. Here's set of downs for Buffalo. Singletary again. Slashing through. Singletary a stop and go. Tackled at the 10. Where has this been? This is the Devin Singletary of his rookie year. Watch him in the hole and watch now. Make a miss. That's what he did so well coming out of Florida Atlantic. And he makes Terrell Edmonds miss in the open field and continues down for more yardage. And the Bills are doing it quickly. Allen. Running. Two yards. Dropped at the eight. And how about the shift by Brian Dayball? All game long, no matter what he was seeing, they were throwing the football. Finds an opportunity to run it, and has stayed with it to get him down inside the 10. Isaiah Bugs with a stop. This is now second and goal. We are under seven minutes to play. Working from the gun, Allen. On the ground, Singletary, the cut, and dives for three. Brought down by Alex Heisman. Clock is moving down to 6.25 and counting. Third and goal for Buffalo, 10-point game. Steelers in front. 
The quarterback draw is always in the playbook with Buffalo, but I do think that Pittsburgh has played it fairly well in this ball game. Shotgun. Allen dials it up. Caught underneath. Singletary loses the ball out of bounds. But clearly did not get enough. Joe Hayden was over there for Pittsburgh. They need a touchdown and a field goal. And at this stage, you take your field goal try with Bass. Yeah, unfortunate there that that ball's popped free and it goes over the sideline. Joe Hayden, one of the toughest skills in football, open field tackling against a shifty back. Not only does he make the play, knocks the ball over the sideline. So the operation here is Reed Ferguson, the snapper. Matt Hawk, the punter, holds it. And Tyler Bass, 25-yard attack. Wind is a factor here, but Bass, strong leg, kicks right through it. And we've got a one-score game. 5.23 to go in the fourth, 20 to 13, Steelers. It is unbridled joy being exuded here in Orchard Park, New York, with the fans in attendance. And we've got a good one here on the fourth. Steelers 20, Bills 13. Coming out to the 25-yard line. Coming up next, game two of our NFL on CBS doubleheader. Most of you will see Baker Mayfield and the Browns battle Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Others will watch the Dolphins renew their AFC East rivalry with the Patriots. More of the NFL on CBS is coming up next. It's going to be fun. I had a pregame show. Coach Coward, Nate Burleson, they were talking about Ben Roethlisberger and the things he's going to need to do with this young offensive line. I think it's a young offense line that's grown up here in the second half. Let's see if he can continue to lead them and rally them with, with a few quick throws thrown in as well. 5.23 on the clock. Roethlisberger. Pump. A deep ball with a flag down. Incomplete. Deontay Johnson was well, matched up with Levi Wallace. And the officials come together to discuss this one. Think he had a fit, had a feeling on that backside too, Ian. Earlier in the game, Ben Roethlisberger knew there was a hold and made a throw anyway, knowing he had the advantage. Wonder if he felt like he had it on the backside here with Levi Wallace again. John Hussey. Five penalties against Buffalo. Holding. Defense. 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 Number 39. Five down penalty. Automatic. First down. Six penalties against Buffalo. The conversation was pretty simple. Holding or pass interference. They went with Holden. They went with Holden. They have used pass interference earlier, so getting holding in work. They're trying to spread it around. <laughs> keep it, keep it moving. Line of scrimmage is now at the 30-yard line. Steelers now up to 205 total yards of offense. Buffalo has 321. Running play to Najee Harris. Leans forward and picks up three. Jordan Poyer among those there defensively for Buffalo. Getting the feeling that Leslie Frazier is a defensive coordinator, Sean McDermott is the head coach. They're about, they're, they're, they're going to tell Pittsburgh essentially, throw it over our heads, but we don't want you catching it in front of us at the first down marker. Watch how many Bills are in the picture right now. Roethlisberger stands tall in the pocket, downfield, caught by Juju Smith-Schuster, and a first down for the Steelers. And Ben Roethlisberger answered the challenge. Ten people in white shirts, actually 11 near the line of scrimmage. Remember what I said, we're not going to give you something near the line of scrimmage. Throw it over our heads. And Juju Smith-Schuster did an excellent job running the route, creating separation from Taron Johnson, and adjusting to the back shoulder throw by Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, it's a 24-yard reception. Juju Smith-Schuster, four catches, 52 yards. Deontay Johnson, five catches, 36 yards, and a touchdown. Claypool, two catches, 31 yards. Four minutes to play in the fourth. They're man-to-man -man coverage now. Steelers on the move, and... He just clocks it with flags down. So Steelers are going to pick up a penalty here. They're fourth. False start. 
Offense, number 19. Five-yard penalty. First down. Wonder if Juju had that. Wonder if that pass was coming to Juju. <laughs> you know, I think a little overzealous. You know, sometimes when your numbers calls and you just came off of a big play, that little extra adrenaline spike sometimes gets you. Can the Bills make a big play defensively? A lot of man-to-man -man coverage right now, trying to force the issue. Pittsburgh answered the challenge on the last throw. They spent their top two picks on pass rushers with these kinds of situations. Roethlisberger steps up. Roethlisberger to run in a slide at the 40-yard line. Ben Roethlisberger, 39 years old, being chased down by a 21-year-old, Gregory Rousseau. And he came to camp in shape, ready to go. And what happened was he saw a man initially. They drop in the zone, can't find his receiver. And he shows what true leadership's all about. Doesn't matter the age. In this situation, I gotta go. And he did set and himself up. And he came to our production meeting in a nicely tailored Dapper. suit. Dapper. First time he's worn a suit, he said, <laughs> since the 2019 season. <laughs> Second down and seven. <laughs> Off the hands of Deontay Johnson. Incomplete. It brings up third down with 3.08 on the clock. You know, we talk about all those, those run pass options we're seeing so often. That was kind of an RPO there for Ben, except throwing more to the outside of the field than the inside. We see a lot of those RPOs be in breaking routes, just didn't connect there with Deontay Johnson. Steelers trying to get in the field goal range here. Right now, they're still in a bit of no man's land, facing a third and seven. There's the pass rush for Buffalo. That's something they wanted to increase in the offseason. Five defensive backs for the Bills. Walkersberger on time. Chase Claypool with the catch. First down, Steelers. Matched up with Taron Johnson on the play. Claypool shaken up and heading to the Pittsburgh sideline, but the Steelers get the first, first down. Up, Buffalo. That was a beautifully thrown ball. Timeout. Absolutely beautifully thrown football. Really nice route. We're using the big body Claypool running away from the smaller nickel back Taron Johnson. But look where that football is. Out in front, allows him to catch it and run if no one's there to tackle him. But the only one is going to catch that is Claypool. Taron Johnson, no chance with the separation that Claypool created. Beautifully thrown ball by Roethlisberger. Taron Johnson, who has made a, a bunch of impact plays in his short career with the Buffalo Bills, Matched up with Claypool, who is very physical. He's a specimen. He's 6'4", 238 pounds. He creates mismatches every time he's on the field. And that catch radius is wide. And Ben Roethlisberger tests his guys with catch radius. He throws deliberate bad passes in practice to see what they can handle so he'll know where he can throw it in a game. Pittsburgh has a first set of downs. Running play. Najee Harris. Gets hit immediately and a timeout taken by the Buffalo Bills. He's trying to save as much clock as possible with 2.56 left in the fourth. Seven point lead for the Steelers. Stay tuned. NFL Today update, time permitting. JB, Phil, Nate, Boomer, Coach Cower, all the latest NFL scores and highlights. Buffalo Bills lost one game at home last season against the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, packed house, the fervor with NFL kickoff weekend and fans back in the stands. This place was rocking from the word go. The parking lot was rocking at 7 a.m. I got here Thursday night, it was already starting to rock. Yeah, you could feel it. You could feel it. But here in Pittsburgh, you would just think running it eating up clock, but you also trust Roethlisberger. He's not going to put you in harm's way. Second down and 11. Bills are down to one timeout. Roethlisberger to throw it. And nobody there. And it stops the clock with 2.52 to go. Deontay Johnson, the intended receiver, and Roethlisberger took a shot at the end of the play. That's the second time they didn't connect on a similar route. Remember earlier in the half when I said Roethlisberger would come back to him because it looked like he ran the wrong route? 
Same thing here. Roethlisberger is expecting him to stop and see the back shoulder throw. And Deontay Johnson is continuing down the sideline. Right now, they'd be looking at a 46-yard field goal. Obviously, clock very important, but trying to make it a two-score game. That's the big one. Third down and 11. Roethlisberger dials it up with a short pass to Washington. And a crowd of Bills defenders, including Taron Johnson, make sure that Washington couldn't get yards after the catch. Final timeout called by the Buffalo Bills. 2.47 on the clock. And they're going to make that a more makeable field goal attempt for Chris Boswell. See, more, many teams in the league in that situation, you're running the ball inside, right? Against a stacked defensive mm -hmm. front. But because you have an 18-year veteran who will take care of the football, you throw it out wide, and that's essentially your running play. And as you noted, get you a few extra yards to help out your field goal kicker. Chris Boswell. See what he's done in fourth quarters and overtime. Pro Bowler in 2017. Seventh year in the league. Christian Kutz will snap it. Harvin will hold it. This is a 45-yard attack. Boswell. Perfect. The Steelers take a 10-point lead with 2.42 to play. Roethlisberger leads the Steelers down the field. They needed three on a board, and they get it as Boswell knocks it through. Remember, this is a brand new operation for him, too. Brand new snapper and Christian Kuntz. Brand new holder and Presley Harvin the third. What a way to get started for them. That'll help the confidence of Chris Boswell and his new guys. And now you look at the clock. You've got no timeouts remaining. You've got the two-minute warning. And you're down two scores. And you know how Pittsburgh is going to play you. They'll send their pass rushers. You've got Watt. You've got Ingram. You've got Highsmith, Hayward. But everyone behind them, top-down defense, meaning nothing behind you, everything in front, tackle, keep the clock moving. Isaiah McKenzie had a 75-yard return to open the game and set the Bills up. They had to settle for three. Pittsburgh defense came through on that opening possession, and it's been a consistent performance throughout. This ball will drop into the hands of McKenzie. Trying to bust it to the clear. Lunges across the 35-yard line, and that's where Buffalo will have a 27-yard return. Last time, the Bills lost a regular season game. It was week 10 in Arizona. Looked like the game was over, but it was Hale Murray, Kyler Murray, to DeAndre Hopkins. Buffalo ended the regular season on a six-game winning streak, longest win streak to end a regular season in franchise history. And now trying to come back from a 10-point deficit late. Right through the hands of the intended target, Davis. Incomplete. 2.32 to go. The numbers on Allen. 25 of 44. 216 yards and a touchdown. Set a franchise record. 69% completion rate last season. Allen in trouble. Dumps it off. The juggle. Incomplete. And Diggs took a shot low at the end of the play from Fitzpatrick appears to be okay and now it's third down and ten playing a little hot potato these last two plays Gabe Davis whistles through his hands ball slightly behind him this one I think a surprise Singletary that it came to him late Josh Allen just trying to get rid of it to avoid the sack they need a they need a catch and they need something to make some people miss in the secondary need a big play out of this one third down and ten he throws incomplete Melvin Ingram the veteran gets to the young quarterback and because of the situation Josh Allen turned down a crossing route in front of him with Gabe Davis because he wanted something deeper downfield down 10 and this late in the game and that allowed Melvin Ingram to finish his pass rush at Josh Allen and knock this one away see if he takes the first one balls out of his hands 
but he couldn't do it in this situation. Tomlinson Ingram has been an outstanding player for them so far and person. He's fit in perfectly. Fourth down. Last chance for the Bills. Allen steps and throws. Complete. Emmanuel Sanders, the former Steeler, hauls it in. And he's got a first down for Buffalo. And that young man has some arm, doesn't he? I mean, he steps, doesn't even step into it, just slides to his left and rifles it for a first down. Trying to get a playoff before the two-minute warning. They do not. Before the ball is snapped, this is the two-minute warning. Well, here in Orchard Park, Mike Tomlin, Sean McDermott, share that collegiate connection. Ben Roethlisberger, the old guard, and the new young star, Allen. Pittsburgh has the upper hand. Bills fans were so excited to enter the gates this morning into the early afternoon. And now a number are exiting with their team down by 10. Toss it to the outside, and Dawson Knox with a stiff arm. Out of bounds. Well, this second half, the Pittsburgh Steelers have been a different team. They have outscored the Bills 23-3 in the second half. A couple of turnovers. Roethlisberger, 188 passing yards and a touchdown. Flag is down. Allen is dumped by T.J. Watt. <laughs> and Watt saying, don't take the flag. Give me the sack. But Melvin Ingram was dragged to the ground by left tackle Deion Dawkins. That's created the flag. Holding. Offense, number 73. That penalty is declined. Second down. So the sack will count. <laughs> T.J. Watt's like, hey, no, 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 don't take this. And they weren't going to anyway because the sack created the play. They don't want him to get an extra down at all. But Melvin Ingram made that play hey, happen for him with the initial three, pass rush on Deion Dawkins. Three, 147 to go, second and 15 three, after the loss. And a jump. Emmanuel Sanders on the outside. Full start. Offense number one. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Yeah, Sanders said, going against Pittsburgh after all these years, he said, you know, I sometimes forget that I actually played for them, but revenge is still on my mind, and I have nothing but love for the organization and the fans. Underneath to Cole Beasley. They don't allow him to cross the 35-yard line. Trey Norwood, who has seen a lot of action. Pittsburgh Steelers, eight draft picks have made the 53-man roster, including Norwood, rookie out of Oklahoma. Third and ten. Allen flicks it to the sideline, and Stefan Diggs. 120 on the clock. And it's a first down for Buffalo. Last, last season, Charles, I, I know there were no fans in stands, so yeah. it, it's hard to look at the numbers, but they still count. The road team posted a winning record last season for the first time in the NFL since 1968. And I think the lack of fans definitely played a part in that. But Pittsburgh saying, hey, fans or no fans, we're trying to accomplish that ourselves. Safety valve on the outside is Singletary. Met by Bush. And the clock continues to roll. He's ruled down at the 19-yard line. Yeah, I'm not sure what he was thinking there. He just take it and get over the sideline. Trying to preserve some time. Under a minute to go. Allen with a flag down. End zone. Too high. Incomplete. Cole Beasley, the intended target. Blanketed by Joe Hayden. See a few a couple of flags down. Melvin Ingram again getting the job side. Defense number eight. He did not get on the right side of the ball before the snap. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. Ingram lost his helmet on the play. So all that extra work he did, he had already negated by not getting back onside before the ball was snapped. Yeah. And as he made contact with Allen, he grabbed his head and made a beeline to the Steelers' bench area. So they're going to spot the football just inside the 15 with 54 seconds left. I hope he's okay because his helmet came off on that play and he may have taken a blow there. Yeah, 
Shotgun's around. Stepping through. Incomplete. Broke it up. Sanders, the intended target, with Trey Norwood there. The secondary has played well throughout the game. Watch underneath first. See Fitzpatrick. It has to go over his hand and look at Norwood's reaction to the football. You called this from the word go. Did he get there a little bit early? Buffalo fans think so. But I think that was a nice play by Norwood, just playing through the body of the receiver. Bang, well, bang on that play. A couple of things here. Hold was called on Buffalo, and now Sean McDermott and his coaching staff have decided, hey, kick the field goal. At some point, you're going to need a three, and you're going to need a seven. And try and preserve as much time as possible for that next drive if you're able to get on the onside kick. Tyler Bass. 42-yard attack. And Bass sneaks it in. Got a seven-point game with 46 seconds left. And you just play the clock game and circumstances. Our game summary here in Orchard Park. Allen to Davis, the first touchdown of the day. But on fourth down, this play was doomed from the start. They turn it over on downs. Deontay Johnson, the juggle, and the touchdown for Pittsburgh. The block punt. Killebrew, Gilbert, scoop and score. And 23-16. The Steelers in front with 46 seconds left. They handle this onside kick, and this one is over. Buffalo out of timeouts. Now remember the rules committee changed the uh, changed the setup zone for kickoffs now hoping to try and help the onside kick just a little bit. I don't know how the percentages will play out. But remember they, they you remember in the old days you had everybody up there. Sure. Then they said now you can't have well gal you can have no more than nine in the setup zone. No less than eight no more than nine changing the rule a little bit trying to help with the onside kick percentage. Well the percentages were not very good for the teams trying onside kicks last year. Timeout taken. Three successful onside kicks last year out of 67 attempts. So this is why they're trying just that you know a little tweak maybe they can make it four. <laughs> I'm not trying to be facetious here but they're trying to see if the onside kick can stay viable in the game. And that's one of the one of the things that they did. They still want it safe, but now they're giving them one more one more opportunity with the change. Obviously, it creates more intrigue if it's something that's at least considered feasible, right? Statistically, but it definitely made it a lot safer. I'm old enough to remember when it was just all-out collisions yeah. downfield. This is this is way better for all the all the people involved. So it's going to be Bass lining it up. On the tee, Bills trying to stay alive. The ball rolls and handled by Juju Smith-Schuster. The Steelers with the football. 45 seconds left. And he played. And Pittsburgh is going to get a W to open the season in western New York. We're going to send it to New York City. NFL Today update. Better second half by the QB, boom. Yeah, much better by Zach Wilson in the second half, 14 to 21, 174 yards. This touchdown pass right here to Corey Davis, his second of the day for both Corey and Zach. Two-point attempt, failed, 19-14. Panthers lead the Jets. Back to Ian Eagle. And the final seconds, the Pittsburgh Steelers, a team that was not getting a whole lot of attention during this offseason heading into the regular season. Other teams were getting the spotlight. And Pittsburgh just went about its business, prepared for week one, new look offense, new faces on that O-line. And what do the Steelers do? They walk into Orchard Park and walk out with a win over the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen said it perfectly to us beforehand. We're playing a Mike Tomlin coach team. That means nothing but respect. Final score, the Steelers 23, the Bills 16, as we go to New York for the NFL Today update.